Hello and welcome to the Stock Planner channel. We're primarily swing traders sharing our ideas with the hopes that we'll educate you and make you a better trader. We all have something to learn. Today I'm going to show you how I use a fairly reasonable priced software package called Simply Wall Street. And I'm not getting anything from this. I'm not, I'm just, I use it. It's only $10 a month and it, it does help me in my analysis. I have about fourteen thousand dollars i want to spend looking for something that that i can buy long term over the next year or two that's going to go up not down go up i have a lot of stocks now currently that are short and i have a little too much short so i'm looking for a long but before i do i want to tell you that we're an education channel hoping that you'll develop your own strategy because that's the only way you're going to win you can't follow somebody else's strategy blindly. And you can't believe the hype. There, you'll see on the internet lots of people saying that they're making 90% win weight. And I found out over the last 15 or 16 years where I was trying to write algorithms that were going to give me a high win rate. But that's not the secret. The real secret is to stay in the trade a little longer, cut your losses short, stay in the trade a little longer, and have your wins bigger than your losses. And if you can do about a 50-50, oftentimes you'll have a winning strategy. In other words, money in the pocket is more important than a win rate. So don't believe that hype. Do your own work. Take your own responsibility. Let's get started. This is the home screen for Simply Wall Street. And it shows the news. I use this as my news reason of the, the various different stocks that I'm interested in. Um, it's based on the portfolio and the watch list. It gives you the, the news, the latest news on the stocks that you're watching. And of course, it gives you a summary of the top gainers, top losers. And these are important if you're, if you're shorting to know this is important. But I trade from a watch list of stocks that I know and love and put those watch lists in a portfolio. I have several different watch lists or portfolios that I can use to ana analyze. These are stocks that I think are going to go long. These are stocks that I think are going to go short. These are, I call that video, but these are stocks that are being hyped up. That everybody trades carnival paypal fiverr you'll see a lot of youtubers produce videos on those stocks because a lot of people are doing options and so i have that list there one year return wasn't so hot and what you do with simply wall street this is called a snowflake and you want it to be big and green and you want to have a great future growth a past history of growing a good past a healthy company Maybe a dividend. In my case, I'm a swing trader. I'm in and out, so I don't care about a dividend. And it may be undervalued. You tell so. It had a good seven-day run and a good year run. And it's green. But today, I want to talk about my current interest, which is about 140 stocks. These are stocks that I'm looking at very often. And I want to buy, I want to buy these stocks for the long term, maybe two years out. And we're sitting here. So I'm interested in future growth. I want it to be a profitable company, and it'd be nice to be undervalued as well. Don't care about the dividend, and it's nice if you see, see that the company has been growing over the last five years. So I have a watch list of stocks that I know and love, and you can see there's some big green snowflakes on there. And I can sort this in very different ways by total score, and that puts the big green snowflakes on top and the lousy ones on the bottom. Why is that important? Because if we're it, in a recession, lousy companies will do lousy. Good companies might be slow grind down. If you're in a re true recession, fueled by inflation, all stocks, even oil and utilities will be affected. But these big green snowflakes will be affected slower. But I want a, a company that has some future growth that's growing, especially since I'm investing for two years. I want that stock to grow. So I'm going to sort it by future score. And here is the stocks that came up. There's, you can stop this if you're actually using this, but this is sorted by the stocks that have the best future growth. And this time I'm not looking for big green snowflakes. And we could, but I have a feeling that the oil stocks or energy stocks and Halliburton is in a lot of stuff, but you know, hey, I got to be careful with that. But I want to do some analysis that benefits me. But I'm holding NEO at the moment. I have a stock. In Neo, I bought it at around five thousand dollars about one year ago. 
and one year is 50 percent that's red that means down five thousand investment one year ago fifty percent decrease which means i lost half of my investment i'm holding this stock for loss i'm selling calls against it so it's not as bad but i'm in the in the two thousand dollar loss on a five thousand dollar investment it's not good but the last seven days for neo has been kind of terrific now we've had a little bit of tr trouble neo is a, is a car company electric vehicle in china lots of people in china there's some risk of delisting but it has grown so i want to look at neo as a f growing company for the future and see if, see if i want to do something more to offset that losing trade i don't want to do too much because uh, then i'm violating the principle of adding to a losing trade i am losing so i click on neo do some further analysis and it says earnings are forecast to grow by 84 percent that's what i wanted that is terrific and they have grown by 17 percent per year over the last five years that's good too no risks but there is a risk of delisting these are the competitors here that's nice and it has a nice description here if you don't know about it this is something i'm this is a company i'm familiar with i don't want to go into too much of it but uh they have an interesting way of of um, swapping out the batteries and that way you don't get stuck with a, a battery every five years and we put battery replacement here like you do when it tells it it could cost up to ten thousand dollars to replace the battery there's no savings and i do know that simply wall street while it's not free they do offer five analysis per month and that's where we're at now you can analyze up to five stocks per month free uh and after that you need to you know if you need more that might be enough if you have a small account neo is unprofitable at the moment and these are the competitors here's neo and ford and it is undervalued compared to telso and you're using this price to sales ratio versus peers as a way of comparing whether it's undervalued or not price to sales ratio this is not the epe because it wouldn't be a PE for an unprofitable company. Here's the current PE, PS, price of sales, and that's a fair price of sale. So it's undervalued according to this analysis here. And if you use the free cash flow method, this stock is overvalued. Look at that future growth. Look at the company, future growth forecast versus the industry. That's terrific. It is forecasted to become profitable over the next three years. That's a good sign. Earnings per share growth fantastic and the earnings have been increasing that's that is terrific this is revenue i mean they're making some more money of course no dividend and you can tell that by the snowflake future growth it is not undervalued it is undervalued if you compare it to your price for sales and the peers but if you use the free cash flow method it's overvalued and that's probably not an accurate way of, of measuring it because this company is again it's not profitable so i'm looking for something for future growth and i and also to add to my already existing investment here is the chart you could buy this stock at about 21 dollars if you want to take a thousand dollar investment you get about 50 shares we're looking at trading view and we're looking at neo on the daily time frame each bar is a daily daily worth of data and the first indicator is a zigzag it's a perfect it always picks the tops and bottoms but to do that it always looks to the future and right now the zigzag doesn't know what it's doing and when it doesn't know what it's doing that's when i like to take a trade if it thinks i think it's going to go up the macd the zero lag macd and my settings are in the description below they're free this is trading goods free great start this is stochastic rsi and you can use any indicators as long as um your indicators are telling you when the zigzag doesn't know what it's doing because you can't use that you have to use other indicators and when the r side crosses below the third and comes back around that's when we like to take a trade so when all these things occur and this is at below the zero and when they all three occur at the same time i call that the three indicator strategy and i have these singles out on my discord some are free and some is a paid subscription but i do have each one of these the macd stochastic and the rsi individually out there or when they occur you just got to put it together three indicators gradually i like when they all occur but 
And that would have predicted, that th those three things would have predicted this rise independently of the zigzag. MACD below the zero line, stochastic come back around, that's 20. And come below the 30, this is the RSI, below the 30 and come back around. When they all occur at the same time, and that would have been a nice run. So I use it a lot. RSI below the zero, stochastic below the zero, the 20. This is, I'm sorry, below the 30. That's the RSI below the 30. The stochastic below the 20. And the MACD below the zero line, but this is not. So you may, may not have took that added trade there. But if you did, and only use one indicator or what's your own, you, that, that would have been a profitable trade. That's just following your rules and strategy. And this is called technical analysis. Swing trading is 75% technical analysis. And the other 25% is what we did before. We looked at some of, of the financials for NEO. Now we're going to do something a little different. We're going to go to the week, weekly. And now each bar is a week's worth of data. And if I bought in this area here, thinking it was going to go up, 100 shares would be about $5,000. And what, what happened? I lost half of my investment. Now we're going to go ahead and put the Fibonacci from the weekly. And I always like this again is why I like the zigzag because I can draw my fibs based on the last down trend and kind of use that to predict where it might go in the future. Now, this is weekly data. Is this stock coming down to this line here, 12? Or is it going up to this line, 25 or 32? Remember 25. That's... I think it's going to get to 25 before it gets to 12. So the broken wing strategy is a long strategy. And I don't want to spend too much money because not in this market here and not with all the things going on. But I do think NEO is going up. So if you sold two 25s, oh, you remember that 25 we were talking about? That's where I think it's going to go. At 850 each, that's $850 times 100, you know, I think about $1,600, $1,700. And you bought a 30. And you bought a 1750. You have eighty dollars left over, and that goes in your pocket. And your your risk on this is about 170. So if you did this investment and this Neo went to the moon, you get eighty bucks because you missed it. This is you would want ideally you wanted to get around 25. That's where I think it's going to go. That's where you get the most money, 25. But if it went to the moon, you got eighty dollars on a a risk of 170 which is close to 50%, but I figured it up as 47% profit over two years. And you divide that by two and you get around 24, it's 23 something and you round it up 24% APR. That's good if it gets away and runs. But if it ends up around 25, you'll get the most. Let's take a look at that another way. Looking at the table, if it gets to 25, somewhere in here, you can take profit all along here. At any time during the trade over the next two years, any time, if it gets to that, and if it shoots to the moon, you can take profit up there. Now the green zone is where you want to be. And what I try to do, I try to try to shoot for 25% of the max profit. So that would be 25 times five or six, and that would be 125 or 130 somewhere in there. So when it gets to 125 or 130. It needs to go up in this area here. It needs to go to about one thirty, about thirty-one dollars. And I think that was a number that I seen on my chart. Thirty-one. I was wondering why did it do that? And that's the way options work. Thirty-one and twenty-five. Can it go twenty-four or twenty percent over the next two years? I certainly think it can. There's thirty-one. There's thirty-two. Will it get there? There's twenty-five. Will it get there or is it going down here based on something that China done like shoot a missile or delisting or not reporting their earnings correctly? Lots can happen in trading. I think it's going to get here for a 24% APR. And that is what Warren Buffett does between 20 and 24 in the past. And I think this last couple of years, he's been doing about 18. That's annual rate. That 24% is 6% per quarter is what I'm trying to achieve. And that is nowhere near 
the height of day trading scalping, but it is slow, consistent profit done the easy way. And a broken wing butterfly is easy to manage, but you have to manage, but easy to manage. And there is no upside risk. There's only one side of this trade. This trade has to be above 1920 as long as it stays above that. And it is that already. And you can even go the other way from where it's at now about 8%. So it could drop 8%. That's your stop loss. The only risk you have is to the downside. And that's capped at 170. I think this is sweet. Let me know what you think about it. Going up, going down. Happy trading. Do your own due diligence. Check out our Discord. It's free. There's some singles out there, and there's some other levels if you need a little bit more. Please comment and disagree. Once you engage and understand what you're doing, that's when you become a more consistent trader. That is my major goal is for myself, is to be a consistent trader. And doing these videos, talking about my stocks and my mistakes, all have rolled into making me a more consistent trader. If you like what you're doing, we'll catch you on the flip.